The reason we care how our gut health is functioning is because they have a profound effect on our overall health. They're sending signals back up to our brain, so they're controlling the way we feel, our brain fog, our fatigue. It can even reduce our risk for chronic diseases, diabetes, heart conditions, and things like that down the line, even reduce our risk for some kinds of cancers. Oh my goodness, Courtney Talbot, welcome to the Stop Faking Fine podcast. Thank you, Dana. I'm so glad to be here. Oh my gosh, I am so excited to nerd out on all things gut health, nutrition, science, and everything. One thing about you is you say that the journey toward health begins on the path of self-love. And I absolutely love that. Tell me more about why you lean into that phrase and what made you interested in gut health in general. Absolutely. So I love that phrase because when it comes to taking care of ourselves, the research shows we have found, and if you've tried this yourself, I'm sure you've found that there's no way that we can improve our health by disliking ourselves. There's no way that we can hate ourselves into better health. And right. so the way we have to go about it is moving from this place of negativity to trust and respect for our bodies, and eventually we can get to love. I know sometimes going from this negative mindset, jumping straight to love feels like a big jump, but we can get there. It just takes a little time. I love that. As you mentioned that, have you ever had a negative mindset with your with your body or with your nutrition? I definitely have. I sometimes find myself feeling just like, you know, it sometimes takes a lot of effort to decide what you're going to cook, to cook all of these different meals. And when you're so busy, it can feel like just another layer on top of things that have to yeah. get done. But yeah. trying to take it from a more... Um, like this, this respect and this trust kind of mindset of being like, mm. well, even though I, you know, I got to feed myself, I can at least make it fun. I can at least make it taste good. I can make it work for me. Um, so can make the time to do that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I, I love that. So like from a nutrition standpoint, now you are mentoring and coaching others on how to eat well, nourish their bodies, nourish mm -hmm. their minds. What made you interested in pursuing this career around nutrition and essentially gut health? Yeah, absolutely. I have always been so interested in like biology. When I was growing up, that was always my favorite class was science class. I originally even thought that I wanted to maybe dabble in medicine. But yeah. as I got older, I found that the most interesting part of all of our approaches to health was the food for me. Yeah. And so as I got deeper into the world of nutrition through uh, like my undergrad and graduate studies, learning more and more about the gut microbiome was so fascinating to me because it's a way that we can target our overall health by using nutrition. Mm -hmm. And so I that's what that's, was really interesting. I think that that's so interesting that you were going to, like that you were interested in being a doctor, yeah. but that the most interesting fact about that or the interesting line of courses was around nutrition. And really mm -hmm. most doctors, like that's not part of the curriculum it is isn't. nutrition and gut health. So tell me more about that. Absolutely, yeah. So actually, funny enough, my partner is a physician. Um, and so he is always joking with me about being like, oh, I've learned so much about nutrition from you I, that I didn't get to learn in school. So I always yeah. was fascinated by the biology and the biochemistry of the human body. But I've always loved to cook. I grew up doing that. And, and I love to eat. And so finding ways to use nutrition to improve our health was so much more interesting to me because I could use something that we all have to do every single day, multiple times a day to target yeah. our health. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You, uh, you have shared that your <laughs> clients have often tried everything except nutrition when they, when they get to you. So mm -hmm. can we talk about that for a minute about how nutrition I think is the unsung hero in our, in our health at a lot of times. So what are the, like, what are some, I don't know, situations that you've seen? So I just had like a new patient recently come to me and I, I always sort of ask this question, like, what made you want to come see a dietitian at this point in your you know, life? Mm -hmm. And this person said to me, well, I've had lifelong stomach health issues. I've always just had a sensitive stomach, some sort of something going on forever. It got worse recently. So I went and saw a doctor and my doctor handed me, you know, they ran all the tests. They said, everything looks normal try this. And they handed them a sheet of paper that said, just cut out all of these foods and see if that helps. 
And they were yeah. like, no way is that going to work for me. I, I need a better solution than just yeah. stop eating all my favorite foods. That's not going to yeah. work. And so yeah. that's how they found me. Do you see, do you find that people usually like, is that pretty typical where they have exhausted every other resource and they're finally like, okay, this elimination diet, like, can you unpack more mm -hmm. about the elimination diet? Like what's on the sheet that everyone says you need to eliminate? 100%. So usually the thing that I'm seeing people show up with is I told my doctor, I have all these stomach problems. They ran all these tests. Everything looks fine. And so they gave me this elimination diet and all, always they're being given the low FODMAP diet. Yeah, yeah. And what that is meant to be is like an eight week protocol that you do with a provider where you cut out a bunch of kinds of carbohydrate and then add them back in over time. Mm -hmm. And the catch is that people get handed a piece of paper that says, here's all the foods you can't eat anymore. Good luck. They yeah. never oh. add them back in. And so we're oh. losing out on so much good Oh, so much in this conversation. Okay, so the low FODMAP diet, like mm -hmm. let's unpack that for a minute because mm -hmm. I think when you do have gastro issues and mm -hmm. you're on the internet because, right, the power of, you know, WebMD and the everything Google. else, we can, the <laughs> Google, the power of the Google, you can start looking for things and that FODMAP diet comes up. And so- yes often you fall victim to that to say, okay, well now I need to eliminate nightshade vegetables and like all mm -hmm. of these things. Like, can you dive, let's nerd out on like, what is FODMAP Absolutely. and why in your opinion, doesn't it work or does it work if you stay with the eight week protocol? Because you've already mentioned that it's a <laughs> diet that's intended and I hate the word diet. We're mm -hmm. going to talk about that in a minute, but let's, yeah. let's, let's table that for right now. But if you want to jump into this mm -hmm. FODMAP, Absolutely. what from your, you know, from your educated perspective, what are your thoughts? So I think for some people it can be helpful if they, there's very clear like food items that we know trigger their symptoms. Or, you know, if they think that it's feasible to do the full protocol. In that case, it can be helpful for some patients, but it definitely has to be done with a provider who knows what they're doing. The problem comes when we're doing it all by ourselves. If we're cutting out every single one of these foods, and to give you some perspective, it's a lot of foods. FODMAP is actually an acronym. It stands for fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols. These are just kinds of short chain carbohydrates, mm -hmm. which is the food our microbiome eats. But in some folks, their microbiome is, is overactivated and essentially is causing extra gas with these foods. And that's where the discomfort comes from. But All so right. So, I, so I'm hanging on this. I'm hanging on this. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Because those foods feed your microbiome. So exactly. if, if you have an overactive microbiome, which mm -hmm. do you have a percentage for that? Like what percentage of the population actually needs this? Mm -hmm. Isn't it very small? It's very small. And honestly, a lot of what we can do, a lot of these patients, instead of doing a low FODMAP diet and the whole elimination reintroduction phase, a lot of times what we can do instead is just make sure we rebalance their gut microbiome and these symptoms start to go away without having to cut out and reintroduce all these foods. What we have to do is fix the dysbiosis, that's the unwanted levels of our gut bacteria. And, and improve our microbiome health. And a lot of times their symptoms start to clear up. Right. But we are not educated. Like this is not talked about a lot, like rather mm -hmm. than fixing the gut microbiome. So if mm -hmm. we have to repopulate that gut microbiome, how would mm -hmm. you go about doing that before? Because also like, let's also mention that that FODMAP diet, you've got to be invested. Like that is you're mm -hmm. cutting out a lot of food and you so, are not allowed to eat a lot of things and mm -hmm. you can't just willy nilly it like one day today and yeah. one day tomorrow. So let's, can you share for a hot second, the investment that you have to have in that and what is the detriment to your overall health, I guess, for lack of a better word in not doing it properly. Mm -hmm. So in the case of the FODMAP diet, usually the recommendation is you have to eliminate a, a huge volume of foods completely for a, a very strict two weeks at least. 
Mm-hmm. And once that's done, once you have reduction in your symptoms, you're very strictly cutting out these foods. And these are anything from, you know, nectarines, plums, artichokes, avocados, garlic, onions. Mm-hmm. So foods that are very difficult for a lot of us to get rid of if they're a part mm-hmm. of our daily diet and are considered foods that are healthy for us. But mm-hmm. we got to very strictly get rid of them for a couple of weeks and we add them back one category at a time to monitor for tolerance. Make sure your symptoms don't come back. If they mm-hmm. do with one particular category of food, that is a note to us that maybe we want to just reduce the volume there. We just want to eat them in moderation mm-hmm. or that's a sign that, you know, we've got some other work to do in other parts of our digestive health. Mm -hmm. So if you, instead of doing the FODMAP diet, so if someone Mm -hmm. came to you and they were like, all right, Courtney, I'm ready to go all in on the FODMAP. I'm exhausted and this is what I'm going to try. What would your course of action be for them instead of doing that? How do you rebuild that gut microbiome? Instead, I'm going to be focusing on repopulating our gut microbiome with probiotics from food or from supplements if we mm-hmm. want to go that direction, we're going to make sure that we're eating a high fiber diet to feed our probiotics. Once we've got them in there, we're going to be focusing a bit on our omega threes and our um, inflammation reduction kinds of foods. Mm-hmm. And we're going to be focusing a lot on stress management so that we can optimize how well our digestion is working. Oh, okay. Like so many, <laughs> so many things to talk about. So yes. from a stress manager, let's, let's talk about that for a hot second. So what does stress have to do with the gut? I will let you explain it. I'm a record okay. on repeat saying the, <laughs> the, that, that your stress, your cortisol has mm-hmm. a significant impact on the gut microbiome. And yes. this is something that we don't talk about enough. So can you like nerd out for a minute on that. Absolutely. I would love nothing more. That's my favorite thing to talk about. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Which is why I love you so much. Let's go, girl. Let's go. (laughs) Exactly. So the reason that we talk so much about stress management in the gut health world is because our gut is directly linked to our brain. We have a big nerve called our vagus nerve that goes straight from our brain all the way, you know, down the side of our neck, through our diaphragm into our digestive tract. And it is what is communicating between our brain and our gut. It is a constant two-way communication pathway. So anything we're doing that's going on in the gut is sending signals right back up to the brain. Those can be positive signals like neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine that make us feel better. It can also be stress signals. If we have a lot of gut, uncomfortable gut symptoms, a lot of stress, a lot of inflammation going on, our gut is sending distress signals up to our brain, like what is going on? Mm. And our brain is doing the opposite as well. If we're feeling a lot of stress, mental stress going on in our brain, it is sending distress signals downwards to our gut and our gut is reacting by becoming more stressed. But Mm -hmm. we can also use that in the opposite way. If we're managing our stress, building our resilience, improving our mood from either the gut side or the brain side, we're going to improve both ends of that you know, communication pathway. Oh my gosh. I love that. So if you're going to improve the communication pathway through Mm -hmm. the gut, and if the first course always being nutrition with food, so what Mm -hmm. is your favorite protocol? Like what are your go-tos to help your clients really rebuild that gut? Because we need like, what's the list to go to the grocery store with Courtney? First of all, we want to make sure that we're eating some kind of fermented food and that we want that to be a fermented food that says right on the label, live active cultures because our fermented foods are going to have our beneficial bacteria already built in. They're in the food. They're making them, you know, breaking down some of our carbohydrate, creating something. Um, In the case of kombucha, it's creating carbonation. In the case of yogurt, it's creating that distinctive flavor. Or in the case of sauerkraut and kimchi, that kind of sour taste. But we want to make sure we've got the live probiotic in there. And that's the key. That's where we get more bang for our buck by having the actual probiotic in the food. Mm -hmm. And then when you're looking at all of those, so there are so many dietary traps when you go to say, Mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to go get yogurt. I'm going to choose this strawberry with all of the Mm -hmm. things in it. So how do you direct your clients to make sure that they choose wisely when you're getting these fermented foods. Absolutely. Especially I feel like yogurt and kombucha are the two that are tricky when we're at the grocery store. 
So mm -hmm. when it comes to kombucha, we're checking that label and we're making sure there's not wild amounts of added sugar in there. We know that the kombucha is made with a little bit of sugar because that's what the bacteria are eating, but mm -hmm. we don't want it to still be in there. We don't want extra added at the end. So just checking the label and making sure we've got low doses of added sugar. We want that right. to be just a couple of grams, if any. I mean, I like to say five grams or less is kind of yeah. my rule of thumb. Do you have that same thought on the sugar amount? And uh -huh. when you look at the label and you, mm -hmm. you know, you turn that around, it's, I, I strongly encourage every single one of us to empower yourself to look at the label and look at the ingredients and the mm -hmm. ingredients, I think a red flag for yogurt, for anything is if that first ingredient listed is sugar, then it's like, okay, mm -hmm. we are candy coating. What is something that could be healthy and mm -hmm. you've just destroyed the health benefits for that. And for yogurt, it should be milk. Exactly. You yeah. shouldn't you shouldn't have any other added sugars. And if you want vanilla flavored, it can have vanilla bean or mm -hmm. vanilla extract, some kind of pure form of that flavor, but not any ingredients that you can't you pronounce. Don't need extra sugar. Exactly. No. And that one's sort of tricky when it comes to our live active cultures. The pronunciation of bacteria is really hard. So don't mm -hmm. worry about trying to pronounce the bacteria. Correctly. Right, right, right. They're all right. named in Latin, which <laughs> not, none of us are speaking anyways. But aside from that, it's a very good point. We want to be able to be like, yep, the yogurt is first ingredient is, you know, something that we would recognize as an, an ingredient in yogurt. Like, yeah. Milk. Um, and we want to check again to make sure that even if it's a flavored yogurt, it's not flavored with excess amounts of added sugar. I always like to opt for like the unsweetened. They Oftentimes you can get plain unsweetened and add mm -hmm. something like a little spoonful of jam if you need a little bit of fruit and a little bit of sweet. Mm -hmm. um, but usually there's also a vanilla unsweetened version too, where it's got mm -hmm. the vanilla flavor but not the added sugar. Mm -hmm. We're huge fans of just plain vanilla, no mm -hmm. hormone, whole milk yogurt. Absolutely. And at, my kids like to add a handful of dark chocolate, chocolate chips to theirs. That's where they get the sweetness from. Mm -hmm. And then a handful of berries and, and go for it. So from the perspective of building the gut microbiome, mm -hmm. after you've added those fermented foods, well, first of all, let's ask this question. What if I don't <laughs> like fermented foods? Then, then what's my, what's my go-to here? Absolutely. So in that case, if you're like, absolutely no, I've tried the fermented foods. They're not for me for some reason. That's where our probiotic supplements can come into play because we just got to make sure we get the probiotics in our gut somewhere. If we're getting them from our food, we're getting a little extra um, bang for our buck because we're mm -hmm. getting some a little dose of vitamins, minerals, fiber from our food as well. But if that's just not going to work for us or if we've done the fermented foods and we're still struggling with dysbiosis, we need a little extra helping hand. That's where mm -hmm. our probiotic supplements can come into play. And mm -hmm. there we can get really specific with it. So we can pick which bacteria in particular we want to add to our gut microbiome because scientists have done all the research for us already and said, hey, we figured out this bacteria does this when you eat it. And so we can say, you know what, I want that health benefit. Like, I want to, I want support with my constipation or I need support because I'm prone to traveler's diarrhea or I want a bacteria that is specifically helpful for my mental health. Well, I mean, now I want to, now I want to know what all of these are. So like, do you have a cheat sheet for us? Like, I now know. I need to know like which bacteria I a I hundred percent agree with you, which bacteria. So if you have traveler's diarrhea, what's the, mm -hmm. what's the bacteria for that? The names I don't have off the top of my head, but I totally have a cheat sheet for them. But oftentimes the, I'm trying to think of the name. I want to say it's like the culturel that you always see in like the CVS mm -hmm. right on the drugstore shelf is yeah. one of the ones that is like, it was designed for traveler's diarrhea specifically. That and is now, amazing. So if it you Because it's the first one on the shelf, but that one was originally for traveler's diarrhea. This is what I want to know. This is what I want to know. This is what I want to know. So like, yes. And I have a long-term fan of probiotics and mm -hmm. I have definitely seen an ad for the culturel in, you know, Allure magazine or something I'm reading. And I'm like, oh, they say that, you know, there's an ad for this and there's a beautiful woman on it. So I'm just going to, I'm going to try that one. Yes, so the next time I pop into CVS, I'm buying culturel and mm -hmm. it does nothing for me. 
And so I, I chalk it up as to like, okay, well, I guess I got some good gut bugs in, in my system, but mm -hmm. I am a huge fan of if you're taking a supplement mm -hmm. and you can't attach it to something that it's doing for you, then mm -hmm. you should probably stop taking it. So I love that you share mm -hmm. that that was intended for traveler's diarrhea, which I didn't have at the time that I was taking it. <laughs> exactly. And that's a common thing that happens when people come to me and say, I don't know, I tried a probiotic, nothing happened. And I'll be like, oh, well, which one did you try? What were you hoping was going to happen? Yeah. And sometimes it's just a mismatch between this bacteria just doesn't do that job. Oh and my so, gosh. Do you know yeah, of like, any others yeah. off the top of your head that, do you know of any others by brand that we can kind of talk about? Ugh. By brand, if we want to think things like mental health, I know a brand um, that I know you're familiar with as well that has strains that have specifically been shown in research to be helpful for our feelings around anxiety and mm -hmm. stress and depression and things like that. And so that's oh, a brand sure. that I'm a fan of. <laughs> oh my gosh, for sure. And just to like decipher what it is, it is found in happy juice. It is something that I am <laughs> drinking every single day. I've got it. Got, I've got it right here. I'm ready. I'm ready to go at all points in time. The strains, I feel like for mental wellness that are found mm -hmm. in the mentabiotics, which is part of that happy juice supplement is, are there the only proven ones that are clinically proven? They are patented for mm -hmm. mental wellness for sure. But are there any other strains like that you know of, because I think that this conversation is so interesting because there are also certain strains, like if you've had the flu or you've been sick or mm -hmm. you have other specific ailments, is there mm -hmm. anything else that you can uh, enlighten for us, shed some light on? By brand, it's a little bit tricky. I'm trying to remember. I have, let me pull up my she cheat sheet, honestly. Yeah, for sure. Or even just by <laughs> um, actual going to stumble over mm -hmm. my words, but bathabilidosis, blah, 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 blah. Yes, all the like it, actual sort of names. <laughs> yeah. Even for, even for what those are, because there are so many and it could just to come back to your conversation to say, oh. we've all been in a place where we're like, well, I took a probiotic and it didn't do anything for me. Mm -hmm. And I think the big note is that if it didn't do anything for you, you probably have the wrong one is the first mm -hmm. statement. And the second statement is again, to empower yourself to say, well, what do you want it? to do? Like, what exactly. are you looking for that to do? Because it's not all created equal. And we can put in the show notes. Well, Courtney, you can find your cheat sheet and we'll put it in the show notes exactly. because I know that I can't wait to like dive in and learn more, but we'll <laughs> learn more and I'll put it in the notes. But you mentioned something about fiber yeah. and I wanted to pause for a second to say what you are meaning is not Metamucil. So when you say add more fiber to your diet, please mm -hmm. elaborate on what you mean. I would love to. Yeah. So once this is sort of like step two, once we have the probiotics in there, that's like we want to make sure we're prioritizing our fermented foods or we're choosing the probiotic that we that we need. Next, mm -hmm. we got to make sure we're feeding them. If we're eating our probiotics and then not giving them any of their fuel, they're not going to do anything for us. And that's where our fiber comes into play. And I know when I say fiber, people are automatically maybe thinking Metamucil. We're thinking of fiber supplements, yeah. which we can use if we need them. But first and foremost, we want to be getting our fiber from our food. And again, that's But do they do the food. same thing for you as the food? Like if, if that is where if we're getting it from our food, we're getting way more bang per bite than if we were taking the supplement version. And yeah. that's because we want to make sure we're getting a diversity of different kinds of fiber. And we know that the fiber that we get from a carrot is awesome, totally different than the fiber we get from a whole grain totally mm -hmm. different from the fiber we're getting from a kiwi. And mm -hmm. so having each of those foods is going to feed different bacteria in our gut so that we're making sure all of the good bacteria are getting well nourished, well fed so that they can all do their jobs better. Okay. So for the person that's listening, that is like, oh my gosh, you are speaking Greek to me. I, first of all, Courtney, I do not have time to be in the grocery store. Second of all, kimchi is disgusting. Like tell me <laughs> what I can do. So from a nutrition standpoint, mm -hmm. I think we both, uh, we both agree like are of the same thinking where it's like, you need a healthy amount of protein. You need a healthy mm -hmm. amount of fruits and veggies. You need a healthy mm -hmm. amount of healthy fats and mm -hmm. you need those carbohydrates. So in simplifying that, how do you teach this to your clients? Absolutely. So I teach, um, 
essentially our goal for most folks. We're leaning towards more fiber than what's in like the standard, the standard American diet as we think oh, of right. it. Right. Um, and so what we're doing is we're slowly adding fruits, veggies, and whole grains. We're finding vegetables that you like. We're finding mm-hmm. a way to eat them that you like to eat. We're not trying to force vegetables down your throat that you hate. If you mm-hmm. come to me and you say, I think that carrots are the worst food in the entire world. I'm like, all right, carrots are off the menu. You'd never have to eat one again in your life. Yeah, We're going to find a different kind of vegetable that you like. So we're basically trying to find fruits, veggies, whole grains, beans, all of these fiber rich foods that are going to taste good to you. (laughs) Yeah. Also like to come back to the carrot conversation, like Mm -hmm. your cravings also stem from the gut. So when you have like, let's talk about this for a minute. When you have an aversion for carrots, Mm -hmm. isn't that often that your gut is missing or it's just or it's the makeup of your gut is sending signals to your brain to say, I don't like carrots. But if you shift the makeup of your gut microbiome one month, two months, three months, six months down the road, you might have a carrot and be like, oh, it's not even that bad. And like, oh. why is it? Why is it not even that bad? A hundred percent. Yes. So actually a lot of our taste cravings are coming from our microbiome. That is them sending signals to our brain to be like, hey, can I eat some of my favorite food? Can you give me some of that? The mm-hmm. catch is that if we have gut dysbiosis, our our guts, the our, the bad gut bacteria might be the ones in charge of all these signals. And that's where if we're having like these insatiable sugar cravings, that mm-hmm. can be a red flag that mm-hmm. maybe it's, we've got some gut dysbiosis going on. And so like I was saying with the carrot, if you are just like, eh, the flavor isn't for me, I don't like it maybe try it again in a couple of months after we've, right. we've repopulated your gut. But if it's something like the texture of the carrot or there's something about it that's off-putting to you, I'm not going to force it. But I like people to be adventurous and try foods, especially if they've tried them once before, especially if you tried it once as a kid and you were like, eh, it wasn't for me. Give it another go. Our taste yeah. buds can change as fast as two weeks. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. I love that. As fast as two weeks, if you're populating yep. your gut with the goodness that it needs, which is one thing mm-hmm. that I am so obsessed with. And to come back to the probiotics that we were talking about a little bit earlier and mentabiotics, which is part mm-hmm. of happy juice, that is actually helping with your gut dysbiosis. And it's helping yes. to, 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 to build your gut so that it's kind of in a sneaky way. I feel like your the gut is the Trojan horse of your health and very sneaky. You are changing your cravings while you're drinking this delicious drink. And now all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, I actually liked a carrot. Who knew? Who knew that carrots were good? Who knew? But I have a question for you about gut dysbiosis. So you keep mentioning this word. Mm-hmm. Why do we care? Such a good question. And the reason we care about how our gut health is functioning, especially how our mic- the health of our gut microbiome, that's the collection of all of our you know, bacteria that live in our large intestine, is because they have a profound effect on our overall health, in part because they're sending signals back up to our brain. So they're controlling things like the way we feel, our brain fog, our fatigue, but also things like our overall inflammation. They can have impacts on our metabolism. So we know that our gut microbiome is a big key to how we can modulate a lot of other body processes that we have going on. It can even reduce our risk for chronic diseases, diabetes, heart conditions, um, Mm -hmm. and things like that down the line, even reduce our risk for some kinds of cancers. Mm-hmm. So most of the clients that come to you to say, mm-hmm. okay, I want to really look at my nutrition. What are all of the things that they have tried before they get to you that you feel like you could, if you could reach out your arm and say, oh my gosh, if you would have reached out to me two years ago, you wouldn't have to have gone through, jumped mm-hmm. through all of these hoops. Like what are some of the red flags that you can enlighten the listener to say, okay, if you're going through this, look to your nutrition. So a lot of times people are coming to me after they've had gut symptoms for some time. They're having some sort of discomfort every single time they eat. I have patients who are having every single time they eat a bite of food, they have uncomfortable bloating and mm-hmm. things like that. And it's it's been a constant battle where they're constantly in discomfort. They don't even like eating anymore. So they're having like 
it's a lot of distress. It's not, food isn't fun anymore for them mm -hmm. if it used to be. A lot of times they talk to their doctors about it after, you know, even just getting a doctor's appointment can sometimes take time. A lot of times they're going through a lot of testing. That's maybe stool testing, even things as serious as colonoscopies and endoscopies where you have to do a, some fasting, some prep work. You have to be under anesthesia. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's really hard on the body. Oftentimes they're left with very little action item kind of results. So instead what they're doing is they're trying elimination diets all by themselves. So mm -hmm. they're stressed about that. They're not having any results because they don't exactly know what they're doing. Maybe they've tried 10 different kinds of probiotic and none of them are getting the job done. They've mm -hmm. tried supplements. They've tried all sorts of strange foods um, and nothing is doing the job. Some of them are on a laundry list of medications to treat mm -hmm. their symptoms. One to help with the bloating, one to help with the cramps, one to help with the heartburn. What, you know, they're on five different kinds of medication, one for each symptom, but they're all just sort of band-aid solutions where if we talked about nutrition, if we targeted their gut health through our food, through our stress management, through our lifestyle mm -hmm. factors, we might not need to use all of these other tools that they've tried to band-aid over the problem. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about for one minute, just if, you, if you're if you on one medication, because I've mm -hmm. talked about this a number of times on the podcast where we see you come in for heartburn that mm -hmm. works for a handful of moments. And now you're back with a second medication because you have constipation and now yep. you have the next problem. So for the listener that is like, oh my gosh, I just did a colonoscopy. I'm chasing this ghost for lack of a better mm -hmm. terms. Where, where do they start? If they're like, okay, Courtney, I'm leaning in, I'm leaning in. I'm ready to look at nutrition. Like where, what is your advice for that listener? Honestly, my advice would be if it's within reach, they should find a, a, a provider that can help them through this. Because when it comes to nutrition, we know the science is always changing a little bit. So mm -hmm. having a registered dietitian on your team to help you navigate nutrition science and be able to put together a personalized plan specifically for you mm -hmm. is sort of if it's within reach, that would be the first thing I would recommend. Mm -hmm. If that's not possible for whatever reason for you, I would say following these recommendations, this protocol that we talked about earlier, choosing some kinds of fermented food to work into your day, making sure you're getting good amounts of fiber from our fruits, veggies, beans, whole grains, and mm -hmm. start there and see if you can't make a shift with your diet. Focus on your stress management. Do a little bit of physical activity. Get mm -hmm. some good sleep. Work on our lifestyle factors. I know that a lot of dietitians, or I think, well, let me rephrase that. I think it's very unique from a dietitian's perspective that you are so focused on the gut. Can you share more about that? Because typically, and I, I've, I've not ever seen a dietitian, so I only have examples mm -hmm. of friends that have gone to a dietitian, but they've gone with the piece of paper from the doctor saying, mm -hmm. we're going to do FODMAP or we're going to eliminate these five things, or we're just going to troubleshoot and say gluten's the problem. And mm -hmm. now you're partnering with someone to execute on this list. Can mm -hmm. you share how, first of all, your approach is very different than that because you're challenging the list. Mm -hmm. And second of all, like you're focused on the gut, right? So let's That's talk cool. a little bit. I mean, obviously, if you're going to see a dietitian, you're mm -hmm. going to see Courtney, but like, <laughs> let's talk more about the why and just how you, again, need to empower yourself to not take this piece of paper and just run with the piece of paper that you've received from a doctor. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I do find that in in the world of nutrition, there's so much that you can do once you're a registered dietitian when it comes to specializing in something in particular. So making sure that you are doing a little bit of research, finding a dietitian who has experience in gut health, if gut health is your is what you're trying to focus on. You don't you, like, you but know, I think most people don't know that that's what they're trying to focus on, right? Which is what yeah. I'm trying to like, I want to share yeah. more about that because we never like the gut is the answer. Mm hmm. But it's not usually looked at. You're you're chasing heartburn, IBS, mm -hmm. all of these other ailments, and trying your elimination diet. So one way that we can sort of go about it is if you are someone who is having any any kind of digestive symptoms, I find that that should be a red flag for you 
that we know if our digestive system is being affected, anything going on with any part of our stomach, if that's heartburn, if that's bloating, gas, discomfort, when it comes to food, that's sort of a key when it comes to digestive health. That's our red flag that says maybe we should think about our gut health. Even if we're having symptoms, like every time we eat food, we're feeling like brain fog symptoms or fatigue. That's mm-hmm. another red flag where we want to be thinking about our gut health. What, mm-hmm. what do you think people miss most when it comes to nutrition? Honestly, I'm going to sound like a broken record here, but I think the thing that we're most missing, especially in the U.S., is fiber. Yeah. Yep. If people are and, eating... And the, what's the answer? What's the answer to What's the easy answer to that? So... Mm -hmm. I have created, and we've talked about stress and nutrition, a free cheat sheet. So if you are Mm -hmm. listening and you're not sure where to go, you can go to danalewis.com slash cheat sheet and grab a free guide that helps walk you through exactly what we're talking about. A helping handful of fruits and veggies, a handful of fiber, a little bit of healthy fats, getting the right balance of all Mm -hmm. of these nutrients. But for the listener, Courtney, Mm -hmm. that is like, stop saying fiber. I like cheeseburgers. Like, stop saying fiber Mm -hmm. because it's not intuitive. How do we, what's your, what's your go-to, what's your advice, your leadership to help us eat a little bit better? My first step when it comes to trying to add some kind of fiber is making easy swaps in your Mm -hmm. life. If your go-to is a cheeseburger We don't have to get rid of the cheeseburger, but maybe we make sure the bun is whole grain. So Mm -hmm. right there, we've added an extra dose of fiber. Maybe we make sure that our burger has a piece of lettuce and a piece of tomato on top. Yeah. If we can, we'll do half the volume of French fries and add a little side salad. Yeah. We make these little swaps until it becomes easy. Because until it becomes a habit. I love that. Until, until it becomes, becomes a habit. habit. So exactly. when with most, ha- well, I, a number of restaurants that I go to do serve <laughs> a small little salad on the side. <laughs> so encourage yourself to have two bites of that salad today. Exactly. And then maybe the next time you have four bites of the salad. And I love adding also that you could put like a little, have a little slice of avocado. So now you've got your healthy fat mm-hmm. with your vegetables and your making that a little bit better one small step at a time, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Because any step that you take is going to be better than not taking that step at all. It's never, never too late to start doing these things. Maybe you have had gut dysbiosis for years and years and years. You've got symptoms that you have been trying to solve and nothing has solved them. And you're like, you know what? It's too late. I just have to live with them. Never true. No, no. Always, no matter our age, no matter how long we've had symptoms, it's always worth it to make that one small change and see how it feels. Build on those little, little, little habits until it's it's a lifestyle now. And it's I something that it. you've built that fits for you. It's your favorite foods that you like. Um, it's It fits into your busy work day. Um, mm. It, it's the ingredients that you have access to in your hometown. Uh, we're making it work for you. Yeah, I love it. Do you have any other tips that you would share for sneaking fiber into your everyday meals? Like what are your go-tos? Such a good one. I think another good way that we can do it is things that it sounds a little silly, but thing, things that you would think of if you're trying to sneak vegetables into a little kid's diet, mm-hmm. like you know, add an extra handful of a vegetable to your pasta sauce and blend it up so you don't even know it's in there yeah. um, or things like that. Um, yeah. Adding a little sprinkle of nuts and seeds to your yogurt bowl or add a handful of spinach in your fruit smoothie. Mm-hmm. Um, the spinach in your smoothie, you don't even taste. So if you're making smoothies, handful of spinach, you don't need to go overboard, but just a handful, you can mm-hmm. absolutely bury those in there. I did that for years with my kids. I like mm-hmm. to add black beans to my taco mix. If I'm making yeah. tacos, I'll put black mm-hmm. beans in there. Um, when my kids were very small, they ate it without even recognizing it. As they aged, they were like detectives with like, oh, I see something that doesn't look like ground beef. And I was like, just be quiet. It tastes exactly like a taco. Just go for it. But mm-hmm. adding like beans and sneaking in things. I love your idea of pureeing things. Like if you're mm-hmm. making a soup, you can pur- puree, you know, white beans, cannellini beans, 
chickpeas, like all kinds of different beans in those sauces that have little flavor and Mm -hmm. you don't even notice that you're getting them. Oh my gosh. I love it. I love that you talked about the fact that your food is related to your mood. And I am a little bit obsessed and love you so much for also (laughs) loving just how simple this can be. Like what are your go-tos for, for teaching your clients that your food has so much to do with your mood and how you can really just kind of help yourself be happier with your food? Absolutely. And that comes back to our discussion about the gut microbiome because that and our gut brain axis, that communication system between our gut and our brain, we know that our gut is making 70, maybe even more than that percent of our serotonin. That -hmm. is one of the neurotransmitters that makes us feel happy. And so making sure that we are feeding our gut with fiber and with protein so that it Mm -hmm. has all the tools it needs to make our happy neurotransmitters to send those right back up to our brain. And so that's what our good mood food is doing for us. Mm-hmm. What are your go-tos in actual, in actual food? Like what are, what are some staples in Courtney's diet that we can, we can all kind of copycat? <laughs> Absolutely. One that has been on heavy rotation in my apartment household recently has been overnight oats. Yeah. Um, and we like to make those, we do like rolled oats, um, we use yogurt and milk to make sure we've got some good protein in there. I personally mm-hmm. don't tolerate dairy very well. So we're using non-dairy at my house, but you can use whatever you like at your house. Um, yeah. I sweeten it just a little bit with a little bit of maple syrup or honey just for the flavor. Um, yeah. Topped with things like whatever kind of fruit is in season. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love it. I love it. What is your go-to? Like, this is like random questions for Courtney right now. What's your go-to dinner? Ooh, that honestly really depends on the day. We like to change things up around here. Um, but something that we've had very frequently lately has been, people might not like this. This might be controversial is kale salad. Yeah. (laughs) So we do a big, huge salad with kale, with quinoa, with beans. Um, And lately we've been doing a lot of cranberries and walnuts on top with like a honey Dijon kind of dressing. And that stays in the fridge very nicely for a couple Mm -hmm. of days. So we'll eat it for dinner and then we'll, we'll pack it for lunches. That is one of the best things about kale too. It's almost not even any good the first day that you make it. It needs the salad dressing to like kind of make the kale a little bit more wilted. And if you Mm -hmm. don't love kale, Probably you haven't made it right because I definitely was not a fan of kale until I learned how to do it a little bit better. But let's talk about salad dressings really quick. As you mentioned, like your go-to salad dressing, I think this is another red flag for Mm -hmm. gut health, but also just Mm -hmm. for inflammation and everything else. Because most of the grab and go salad dressings that you're getting, you're reading the label on the front and it's telling you, oh, this is really good for all of these 10 things and whatever they named it sounds really fun. But if you Mm -hmm. turn the label over, it's just full of sugar and seed oils Mm -hmm. and things that um, are not serving you a purpose. So I know that for me personally, I love to just squeeze a lemon, do a little bit of olive oil. I'll do some stone ground mustard and just Mm -hmm. mix those three things up and call it good. And it's so easy. And I think it's something that we all overcomplicate. Like mm-hmm. what is your go-to, what's your go-to mix for that salad dressing on the kale salad that you're eating? Well, such a good question. And that's one thing that I really like is like, in part, because we know we read the back of the salad dressing ingredients and we're like, holy heck, why are there so many ingredients in here? Doesn't, yeah. There seems to be more than necessary. Uh, yeah. And a lot of times they also are adding sort of funky things to make sure the dressing doesn't separate in the bottle. So it stays mm-hmm. looking nice, even though we don't really need those. And so I also tend to get bored of my salad dressing before I get through the whole bottle. So I just like to make it at home. So I'm making it just one batch at a time. My go-to recently has been similar to you, sort of like a, a honey Dijon. We'll do olive oil, a little bit of honey, some mustard, um, yeah. and then seasonings. And I like a hack that I learned actually from TikTok. Someone uses a milk frother like you would use to like stir up milk to mix together their salad dressing. It is so fast and it makes it really nice and creamy. Ooh, I love that. That would make it a little bit creamier than usual. I am... Mm -hmm. I am obsessed with making just different salad dressings. And I can promise Mm -hmm. you this, that if you embrace this 
at home ability. You have mm-hmm. the power. You you can do this. I want to encourage yeah. everyone listening. You can do this, and it's so much easier than it sounds. You need uh, some mm-hmm. kind of a base, an olive oil, uh, mm-hmm. whatever exactly. oil. All you gotta do, yeah, some kind of oil. I like olive just because I love the flavor of it. But mm-hmm. any kind of like an olive, an avocado, whatever kind of oil you like. And then always add a little bit of acid. If that's like in your case, the lemon juice, you can Mm -hmm. use apple cider vinegar, you can use balsamic, any sort of vinegar really does the job. Um, And then whatever kind of flavors you like, Mm -hmm. throw a handful of seasonings in there, mix it up and taste it. Yeah, I did. We had tacos last week and I wanted to make a salad that went along with tacos. And I literally Mm -hmm. did lime, olive oil and cumin. And it was so good on just a regular salad that went Mm -hmm. alongside my tacos that we were making just to get my veggies, which made it easy peasy. Okay. I have one last question for you. You're kind of obsessed with houseplants. Is there a (laughs) sciencey nerdy reason for that? Like if we look in the background, you've got all, you've got all the plants and I love them. Like, do you have a reason outside of the fact that they're beautiful and, you know, they make us happy to have so many plants? I originally started with them just because I liked them. I didn't have any pets. I don't currently. And so I was like, you know, I need something that's that's going to bring a little bit of liveliness to my apartment. And houseplants were the easy way to do it. But the longer that I've had them, the more I've yeah. also learned more about how nature can affect our stress. Mm-hmm. And so there's studies have been shown that even doesn't even have to be real nature. You can even look at pictures of nature and it reduces our stress. If you walk around in your neighborhood with trees, even if you live in a big city, like I live in Manhattan, um, but even walking around a place that has trees, even on the street, sidewalk trees totally do the job that can relax us. So making sure I have plants in my house, make sure I get a little dose of nature, even on days when I'm totally glued to my computer and I can't make my way out to the park. You see them behind you. You see, you see them and they're giving oxygen in the air and making your air more pure and amazing. I love it. I love that your focus also is on stress management. So Mm -hmm. from a dietitian standpoint, what are some other things that you help your clients with above and beyond food for their stress management? Absolutely. So when it comes to stress management, because we've got that two-way communication pathway with our gut and our brain, we know that making sure that our brain is feeling good using our stress management techniques works to improve our digestion in the moment and over time. So I especially like practices like diaphragmatic breathing or deep belly breathing, Mm -hmm. things like walking in nature, getting out in nature if you can, exercise that you like. This isn't forcing yourself to wake up at 5 a.m. and go to the workout class. And say it again for the left. people in the back. Say it again for the people exactly. in the back. Yeah. Not forcing yourself to do exercise. That is finding movement that you like because mm-hmm. we know it's going to be good for your gut. But if, if we hate the movement, it's not going to be good for our stress management. So that's where yeah. finding movement that you like is really helpful. And then even things that sound simple but have a profound effect on our stress management. Things like connecting with people in our lives, calling a friend, seeing someone in person, um, even cuddling our pets can reduce Mm -hmm. our stress levels. Um, Mm -hmm. So anything that you can do that makes you take a deep breath, relax, calm down a little bit is going to be helpful for your gut health. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I love that you mentioned the power of the mind because I love Mm -hmm. to share like the gut brain connection. Obviously we're both like completely aligned on how Mm -hmm. powerful the gut is over your, your mind. But we've all had that friend that went on a diet that Mm -hmm. lost a bunch of weight and you're like, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to go on that diet. And then you go on the diet and the diet doesn't work for you. And you're like, Mm -hmm. why did I not lose the weight? And it comes back to your thought about like, well, if you are not in happiness in your own body about what Mm -hmm. you're doing, and if you have this relationship with the food on the diet that you're supposed to go on, that you are not fired up about it, you are frustrated that now you can't have pizza and you can't have these other things, Mm -hmm. it actually sends signals to in your body to hold on to that weight. And now you're not only not eating food that you like, but you're also not losing the weight. And so now you're just miserable. Exactly. Exactly. Health, our health behaviors should not be making us miserable. They should Mm -hmm. not be the worst part of your day because 
we want to make sure that we are exactly like you said, in happiness. We want to be in a state where we're feeling good uh, Mm -hmm. because that helps us, first of all, actually engage in our health behaviors. um, But it also is better for our body. We know that like the more that we feel good in our bodies, the better we're going to respond to our body's signals, the better we're going to take care of ourselves um, and things like that. So focusing on our stress management, making sure that our lifestyle habits are things that we like to do. We don't want to be forcing ourselves to do these things because that'll turn right back around and we'll end up stuck right where we are. So we want to make sure stress management is a, a major part of our lifestyle factors. And that's why I always like to make sure when I'm working with patients, especially my one on one clients, we got to make sure that these lifestyle changes, these little shifts we're making to improve your gut health are sustainable. We want mm-hmm. these to work for you forever. We mm-hmm. want you to make changes that you're like, yeah, I could do that for the rest of my life. And yeah. and I would like to. Yeah. Because that's the way it's going to stick. That's the way yeah. we're going to make long lasting change. I, I love it. And it comes back to the, your example of having the cheeseburger and saying, okay, I'm going to take one bite of the salad. And then tomorrow <laughs> I'm going to take two bites of the salad. And then I'm mm-hmm. going to take four bites of the salad. And the next thing you know, you're having a salad with a, you know, with a cheeseburger on top of it. And exactly. now you've completely flipped the script on your, not only your gut health, but your mental well-being. also. Mm-hmm. I have loved every part of this conversation, <laughs> Courtney. So if we want to book a call you, to work with you at Nourish, how do we do that? We'll drop the link in the show notes below. And who would you say this is, this is for? Like who are, who, who is the right person to work with you? Yeah. So if you want to work with me, um, you can find me at Nourish Inc. Um, You just go on there, click find a dietitian, type in my name. You can find me there, but the link will be in the show notes as well. Um, And folks that I especially adore working with are anyone who has these digestive disorders. If you've got something going on where you know, like, I've got symptoms of heartburn, I've got bloating, I know that there's something going on with my digestive system, and I... I just need support. Maybe you have tried everything in the book. You've Mm -hmm. talked to all the doctors in the world and no one's got answers for you. I -hmm. would love to help you try and dial in your gut health and your stress management and make sure that we can find some sustainable, long lasting lifestyle shifts that are going to make you feel happier, healthier, bring some joy back into your eating. um, So that you can. All of those things. I just want to go back to the example where you shared you've had clients that have gone to to the gastro doctor, received Mm -hmm. a handful of medications, maybe a paper on on an elimination diet, and you're frustrated because you know Mm -hmm. or you should be frustrated. Let me phrase that because there is a better way. And Mm -hmm. I just want to encourage you not to settle and to look, 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 find another rock to overturn. And maybe mm-hmm. Courtney is that rock that you overturn to say, can you partner with me to look at nutrition? And I have to relate it back to even my husband, when he was diagnosed with stage four cancer, we sat in our original oncologist appointment and I asked naively, oh, what mm-hmm. should we do for diet? Okay. So he needs to start on this chemo. We're going to get this surgery. Like, what should I do for diet? And the oncologist just giggled at me and was like, it doesn't matter. And I, and I was like, what do you mean? It doesn't matter. It has to matter. And I immediately went home and like got on WebMD and got on my computer and, you know, tried to figure it out myself. But I certainly would have loved to have had a partnership in that mm-hmm. moment to say, I need help here. Like, mm-hmm. because the diet and it's like why we're here right now, right? Because I understand that your food plays such a huge part in that and your gut plays such a huge part in your overall health. So reach out to Courtney and just know that there, that there, that there is a better way. We can follow you on Instagram and TikTok at your candle is wellness with Courtney, correct? Yes, it is. And I will drop everything in the show notes and just thank you so much, Courtney, for your time, for doing what you do, talking about nutrition, talking about gut health, talking about helping us manage the stress better and nerding out with me on happy juice and mentibiotics and all of the like gut goodness. This has just been a great conversation. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I love to nerd out on all things food, gut health and stress management. So, you know, 
drop all your questions, follow me, all those things. <laughs> for sure. If someone has a question for you specifically, they can DM you on Instagram, correct? Exactly. hundred percent. Correct. Yes. So I will put that link in the show notes. Use Courtney as a resource and, you know, grab your happy juice and make it a great day. <laughs>